developed and all started like this. About a month ago, we introduced the alpha version of Twizzle, the Twisty Puzzle app, and we're glad that a lot of you have tried it and given us feedback and ideas for it. But if you haven't tried it yet, we wanted to give you an overview of the current features. Twizzle will change a lot, but this core functionality will still remain at the heart of Twizzle in the future. So let's show you what you can do with Twizzle. If you go to alpha.twizzle.net, you'll see that there is an editor and an explorer. The editor will look more familiar if you've used alec.cubing.net and is more geared towards testing out speed cubing features. And the explorer can handle a lot more puzzles and options for those puzzles. So I'd like to show you a little about the editor here. If you'd like to view an alg or a solve, you can enter it in the moves field and the player will instantly update to show which moves you're working on. So you could move your cursor to the middle and even add moves in between if you'd like. And once you have your alg, you can play back similar to a video player. You can also move around the puzzle while you're at it or go full screen. You also have the option to go backwards or forwards by a single move at a time. Like alg.cubing.net, we support a variety of cube sizes. But cubing.js, which is sort of like the engine for Twizzle, actually allows us to support all WCA puzzles. So we could take this Sune alg and view it for 2x2x2, two by two by two, but we could also, let's say, view it on Megaminx or Pyraminx. Going back to 3x3x3, three by three by three, you'll see some familiar options. You can set the stage of the solve. So in fact, the SUNA is an OLL algorithm, which orients these three pieces on top. And you can see that more clearly from this view. And you can still play back. Some of these stages are also available for other puzzles. So for example, you could also view an OLL on the 4x4x4 four by four by four cube. And you could also view a parity algorithm a similar way. So here you can see how the Lucas parity affects the OLL on 4x4x4. And in fact, we also support some stages for other puzzles. For example, here you can see the last layer highlighted for Megaminx. Going back to 3x3x3, three by three by three, we can actually see that by default, the player shows the result of applying the algorithm to a solved puzzle. We can specify a setup to show what happens when you apply it to this case. So we could apply the inverse to the setup, and now when we apply it forwards, we get back to solved. And in fact, for the specific case where we want to start with the inverse, you have this anchor option. So now we anchor the end to be defined as solved, and the start of the animation will show what case is solved by applying the alg. You also have a few playback options. You can speed up or slow down the animation. And you can also choose to toggle the hint facelets that show you the back of the cube. We also have a few alg tools. To show you what these alg tools can do, here we have a more complicated algorithm, which you'll see actually has the same effect as a SUNE. But it's written with these conjugates and commutators. And if you don't know what they are, you can expand them and see this is what the alg is written out. Now, you can see that R prime and R here actually cancel each other out. And then the two U primes here can actually combine together. So we can click Simplify. And now all those moves are collapsed. And the two U primes turn into U2 prime. And if you want to see the inverse of an alg written out, there's also the handy invert button. Now for these four bottom buttons, one of them is similar to alg.cubing.net. It will download a screenshot of the current view. And it'll have the name of the puzzle and the alg in the file name.
and this will work for all puzzles. This is also especially nice for pretty patterns. Walter Randelshofer has this pretty patterns page, which has this beautiful extended multi super flip pattern with algorithms by him and Per Kristen Fredland. And we could take a look at the algorithm here. We could turn off the hint facelets if we want a clearer view. So this makes it easier to share in some places and we'll be able to support GIF or movie downloads in the future. There's also some new tools. If you're using a Chrome-based browser, you can connect a Bluetooth puzzle by going to Input and Bluetooth. And once you've connected your puzzle, you can enter moves by turning your cube. If you're familiar with keyboard input for highgames.net or one of the simulators inspired by it, you can also enable keyboard input. And down here, you can see the hint of a feature that I'll have to show you another day. Now, in addition to supporting all WCA puzzles, we support all official WCA notation, and we can also scramble and solve most of these puzzles. So you could generate a Megaminx scramble like this, and then you could generate a solution for it. R4 clock, Pyraminx, Scube, and Square One. You can see the square one view is only two-dimensional, but will definitely support a 3D view in the future as well. We also have a few puzzles that are not WCA events. So for example, face turning octahedron is popular. And we also have master tetraminx, which is like a master pyraminx without tips, as well as a gigaminx. And we definitely like to add more over time, like, like kilominx and ready cube. We can support a lot of puzzles because cubing.js, the engine behind Twizzle, has code that can generate general puzzle geometries. And this was written by Tom Rukiki, and you can explore it better in the Twizzle Explorer, which I'd like to have him introduce to you now. Hello, my name is Thomas Rukiki, and I'm going to show you a demo of some work that I've been doing with Lucas Guerin. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about the Twizzle Explorer app built on top of the QB.js JavaScript framework. If you go to alpha.twizzle.net and you click on the right image that shows the Twizzle Explorer, you will be brought to what looks like a normal simulator of the 3x3Q. And indeed, it functions as exactly that. You can click on faces to turn them. You can right-click on them to make right-side turns. You can even shift-click on them to make turns of one layer below, and all the moves you make show up in the little algorithm window to your right, and you can even directly edit that to type in an algorithm and uh, repeat it like three times and see what it looks like, and you can uh, play it back with the VCR controls and scrub it if you're a little impatient to see what happens, and I can change this 3 to 313 uh, and still scrub it and then you just get basically a blur of moves. But it looks like a normal simulator. But then if you go to the drop down, you notice the puzzle list is rather long. I mean, it's not as long as P cubes or anything like that, but it's still pretty long. So here, for instance, is a Terraminx. And the Terraminx supports the F, U, and B moves. So as you can see, it still shows up here as a, as a legal alg algorithm. And you can just explore all the different puzzles with this. So I can go and I can look at the master FTO, which is really an impressive puzzle. Or to go absolutely insane, I can actually go to the Yadaminx, which is just an absolutely insane puzzle. I mean, if someone scrambles this and they ask me to solve it, I just throw up my hands. There's just no chance. So that's what it is. That's It's got all these different puzzles. But what makes it all work, what makes it possible to make all these puzzles is the fact that it actually starts from a very simple geometric description. So if you click on the options button, 
you'll see all of a sudden all these additional options, and one of which was is the geometric description, this text area up here. And the geometric description is where we actually tell Twizzle Explorer everything it needs to know about the puzzle. So here we're saying it's a dodecahedron with face cuts at various levels. We support the five platonic solids, and that is all. So we support the cube, we support its dual, the octahedron, which looks like this. In 3D, you have to sort of move it around a little bit to see what's going on. We support the dodecahedron, which, of course, we all are familiar with from the Megaminx, and its dual, the icosahedron. We also support the self-dual tetrahedron, which is the basis of the pyraminx. For any of these puzzles, I can go in and I can add in cuts because the cube itself is not that interesting as a puzzle. But all of a sudden, if I add a cut to it, which lets you move cubies around, so I'm going to add a cut parallel to the faces. You can add cuts that are either parallel to the faces, that are perpendicular to a ray through the vertices, or that are parallel to the edges. Those are the three options. So first, I'm going to start with a cut that's parallel to the faces, and it's going to be at a distance of zero from the origin. So this small description, C space F space zero, has built me a fully functional two by two. So Twizzle Explorer has managed to build a notation for this two by two, and I can click on it, and it's a simulator, and I can do everything I expect from a simulator. I can also move the cuts. So instead of using a cut of zero, which is through the origin, I can pull that cut out to say 0.33, which makes it be a Rubik's Cube, and the same notation applies. If I want, I can say 0.9. It's still a Rubik's Cube, but I've got really skinny little edges, maybe eight's better, so you can actually see the colors a little bit. If I wanted to, I can take my Rubik's Cube now, which is fully functional, and I can add skew moves to it. The skew has vertex moves. You actually turn a vertex. The grip is, you know, parallel to the, the vertex. So I can add a vertex cut. Zero means go through the very center of the puzzle. It's just like a skew. Now I have a fully functional combination, three by three and skew. And I can do skew moves with the mouse just by clicking on a vertex. I can still do face moves, the normal 3x3 three three face moves like this, and as you can see the notation all works. So in this particular, for this combination puzzle, the vertex moves are described by a combination of the face, faces that are turned. So here we have the U face, the front face, and the R face. So clicking this is a UFR move. So that's a combo scoop, and I can do anything I want. So instead of uh, vertex zero, I can say vertex 0.7, which gives me a really weird puzzle, but it's, it's still functional. For this new puzzle, which I've just made up, I don't think anyone's ever built this puzzle before, I can ask it, for instance, using the actions, how many different states are there? And Schreier Sim says there's about 1.2 times 10 to the 114th states. It's a lot of states. I can get a case of description file for this puzzle, and it's, this has all the different moves, all the different sets, fully ready to be plugged into case solve or TW search, so you can generate algorithms or do various searches of various kinds. You can also generate SVG output or GAP output, so you can play with the group theory program GAP with this puzzle, which we've just built out of the blue. And uh, you have all these other options. So, for instance, you can say, I'm mostly interested in just one view. I don't care so much about the back view. Or, yeah, I want to see it side by side all the time. You can turn off and on sh foundation stickers. You can change the rate at which we render moves. So I can render these moves. I can speed it up. Or I can slow it down. Well, only if it's still running there. Uh, it's going to be very slow. Speed it up a little bit. Slow it down a little bit. And just many other features. So I encourage you to try this out. Enjoy it. Send email. Let us know what sort of features you'd like to see. Remember, this is cubing.js on GitHub. There's a link at the bottom of the Twizzle page. 
which will take you to cubing.js, which is the project that powers Twizzle and which is where the Twizzle code is right now. So you could see what features and bugs we're currently looking at. And you can also ask us questions about Twizzle or send contributions. So that is the alpha version of Twizzle. There will be a beta release and then a full version one release and a lot will change. So for example, the editor and explorer will probably combine into one app and that app will also have a lot more powerful features. So if you're watching this years in the future, you'll get to see how it all started. And if you're watching this in 2021, please comment to let us know what you think we should focus on. If you know alg.cubing.net, let us know what features you like to have in Twizzle or what new features you think we're missing. And if you're seeing this fresh, do you think the whole thing makes sense? What kinds of things do you think should be uh, most important right at the beginning to help Twizzle be for everyone? We'd really like to know, so let us know in the comments. Until next time.